though the earth shall move and change, and the mountain move to the sea, I shall not be afraid. The Lord of hosts. And yeah, earthquakes can be memorable moments. Yes. And it's locked in time. It is. But they they, they tend to be memorable moments. So yes. it's locked in time in the minds of people. Right. So they can, when if That's I talk to you back, and I don't remember. 9-11. Uh, if, if I mention yeah. the, the San Francisco earthquake, yeah. does yeah. that mean anything to you? No. Just, no, really. Just what we've read. Well, you're thinking about 1906, I take it. Yeah. How about 1989? Oh, right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you have yeah, to yeah. Give a time frame and a location. Well, but those are the two. If you talk to people in California, now, 1906, the great earthquake right. in San Francisco, which yeah. de basically destroyed the whole city, you know, that's kind of ancient history. 1989 is not ancient history. No, no. I mean, I remember that very well yeah. because it was, it was seen live on television right. because it happened during the time that the World Series was taking place That's there in San Francisco. Right, right, yeah. So there were news reporters and everything all over the place when this earthquake happened. Yeah, and it was massive, massive earthquake. Uh, Alice and I, you know, we were living in California in 1994 when there was the North Ridge earthquake, mm. which was also, I think it did $40 billion worth of damage just just north of Los Angeles. It, it's interesting That's because like... Yeah, two was, days after the earthquake, I had to go. We were living in California up in the Bay Area, and I had to go down to L.A. So, I mean, I saw all of this massive destruction and had to take take a circuitous route yeah, to get around detour. because the, the major highways had been destroyed in areas, mm -hmm. right? So the point is that people mark their history by such so major earth-shaking events. <laughs> God-shaking. Well, you know, we use that expression. These are that was an earth shaking this event. Quite literally. Yes, yeah, this was quite literally. literally. But Alice says, now why is it mentioned? And I believe, because I'm saying to you that this prophecy, the, the book of Amos, we're studying it to set up for the preparation of the coming of the Lord. Well, how does this tie into the coming of the Lord? There's only one other place in Scripture where that earthquake is specifically mentioned. And that's in the prophet Zechariah later on. And in Zechariah 14, verse 5, it says, You will flee by the valley of my mountains, for the valley of the mountains will reach to Azel. Yes, you will flee just as you fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, the king of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come and all the holy ones with him. The reference is there will be an earthquake before that will be more than memorable mm -hmm. just before the coming of the Lord. Okay, that's a link here to the last days. Mm, that's interesting. Okay. Well, in, let's move on to verse two. In verse two, he said, The Lord roars from Zion, and from Jerusalem he utters his voice. And the shepherds pasture grounds, pasture grounds mourn, and the summit of Carmel dries up. Now, you know. Carmel, Carmel is up by today, by uh, what is it, Haifa, the port city? Yeah, up in the north. Okay. The Lord roars from Zion. Well, let me let me read that the way it says it in Hebrew better. I mean, I'm going to say it in Hebrew. But Yahweh roars from Zion, and from Jerusalem he utters his voice. Now Peter wrote that the devil goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5, 8. But our God is a roaring lion, yes. the lion of the tribe of Judah. Wisdom stands in the street. She lifts her voice in the square, Proverbs 1, 20. So God roars from Zion. Wisdom stands in the street and shouts. In John seven thirty seven, Jesus said, Now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Let's stop for a moment and have a rousing chorus of, it is no secret. What God can do. It is no secret what God can do. God is not a God of hiding things. No. 
He is a God of revelation. Yes, he reveals. Isn't it? Just let me give you a couple of verses. In Psalm 103, verse 7, it said, He made known his way to Moses, his acts to the sons of Israel. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah 46, 10, he said, Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, things which have not been done, saying, My purpose will be established, and I will accomplish my good pleasure. In Ephesians 1, 9, Paul wrote, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his kind intention, which he purposed in him. Right to the last book, the book of Revelation, which is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his bondservants, mm -hmm. Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. But in his letters in that last book, to each of the churches, the seven churches in the book of Revelation, he says at the end of each letter, but he who has an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Mm. Those who are not his bondservants are likely not listening, yeah. at least to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? They're busy listening to the false prophets, pastors and teachers, who are loudly proclaiming the things that they desire rather than the things that God desires. Just as the Apostle Paul prophesied that we talked about. I'm shall not I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be moved. But just like the truth, planted by those waters, I shall not be moved. On my way to glory, I shall not be moved. On my way to glory. I shall not be moved, just like a tree planted by those walls.